What's up? My name is Frogish, and welcome to Frog Log number one. This is your first time watching, a frog log is a weekly or so update on what I'm doing. And this time, I'm gonna give some updates on the game I've been remaking. If you wanna see the first one, check out the card in the top right of the screen in three, two, one, now. To start off, I wanna announce that I have officially uploaded the original Legend of Mr. Smith on itch.io. I generally don't really care what you do with the game, just don't re-upload it take credit for it, or sell it. If you want to check it out, click on the link in the description and feel free to download it. Now, onto the main topic, the remake I've been working on. It's been a while, it's been a boring and tough three weeks just thinking about getting started on this game. This is what Unity looks like when you first open it. To say it's daunting is a bit of an understatement. Not only that, but starting off is the most difficult. I went with the approach of following or recreating the early builds of my previous game. So I obviously started out with the player movement. Let me quickly note that it's really difficult to choose what tutorials to follow when starting out. It's so hard to understand what is the objective quote unquote best way to accomplish something, considering there are so many ways to do so. Ultimately, I opted to follow Bracky's tutorial on top down player movement. It's an amazing tutorial, check it out. To summarize how it works, you just imagine a player on a 2D grid. Imagine the axis, X and Y, and you go up, down, left or right. You can determine the direction of either of those axes, X or Y, with these two lines of code. They basically return a one or negative one for either direction. You combine that direction along with a function that moves the player with a vector using those axis variables. Of course, this is vastly undermining the math and physics behind it, but I don't want to bore everyone and I don't want to say the wrong things since I'm a complete novice. In fact, if you want a more in-depth explanation, let me know in the comments since it would also help myself understand what exactly I'm programming as well. The problem with this method is that when you move diagonally, the character moves faster. The simple explanation would be that that since you are moving in two directions, you are applying a magnitude or movement variable of two to your vector, one more than any other cardinal direction. Simply put, if you're going up, you're going one unit up, going left, one unit left. But if you're going up and left, you're going one unit up, one unit left, two units total. A simple fix is putting dot normalized onto the movement vector, capping the magnitude to one. And that's it. Now you have some basic movement you can manipulate with the move speed variable. After finalizing this feature, I completed one half of the puzzle. It was surprisingly simpler than I had imagined, and I then continued to add the second piece to the puzzle, combat. I watched a really useful tutorial, again from Brackies, they're amazing, on a simple combat system. The system is very simple. Essentially, you create a 2D circle from a point connected near your player and identify any enemies caught within that circle. If there are enemies in that circle, give those enemies damage and if they took enough damage, kill them. After adding this feature, I quickly came up with the sprite for the main character. Rather than opting for a school student, I came up with this thing. I guess I'm going for more of a ninja type player? I don't know, but it will most likely not be the final product. In fact, I'm not even sure what type of theme I want for this game, so a lot of things are up for debate and subject to change, so if you like something, let me know, and that would help me choose something for the future of the game. I then threw together a wall obstacle, which I followed from Antersoft's really useful tutorial on obstacles and colliders. All in all, I had done it. I successfully finished the prototype, minus the player attack hitbox moving with the player if he turns left or right or up or down. But something felt off. I honestly didn't really like the combat system I had come up with. I've played many top-down games, most of which have characters moving and interacting within the four cardinal directions. North, East, South, and West. What I've noticed, however, with these types of games is that the combat can sometimes be inconsistent. Of course, this is my own opinion. The player has a blind spot in any of the f other four major directions, those being Northeast, Southeast, Northwest, and Southwest. I remember playing some of these games and finding it pretty irritating to deal with those limitations. So I've decided I'm going to scrap 
my current combat system. If you've paused and read the tooltip for the sword in the first frog log, you would have noticed that it states how the sword can magically float in front of you. This was mainly an excuse of not doing the sword swing animations when I first made the game, but I actually think that I can now make it into an interesting game mechanic. I'm going to make the sword float around the player and have it move accordingly to how the mouse moves. I want the player to be able to send this sword forward, similar to Mom's Knife from Binding of Isaac if anyone's familiar with that, and possibly have the sword be controlled additionally by moving the mouse after it's sent out. Kind of like the magic missile from Terraria if anyone's familiar with that as well. I also want the player to be able to press a button, perhaps Q, that would form a ring of after image from this one sword, creating a sort of block, if you will. It's it's gonna just circle the sword very quickly around the player, creating what looks to be like multiple swords, but really it's just the one sword moving really quickly. Yeah, you get the point. It's a lot to handle, and I can't promise I'll achieve all of it. I think that this change will drastically affect the gameplay loop. I think this will make the game more arcade-like, and if need be, more bullet hell styled. I want to openly disclose that I do not disrespect the other combat style, or any combat style. I'm just noting a personal limit limitation I found within them and I decided I want to change it for my own game. I mean, consider all the original Legend of Zelda games, which of course my game is inspired from. They all had the same limitation and were complete successes. I'm taking a bit of a risk with this design choice. I hope I can still make the game feel RPG-like, but I want to make the combat more interesting and enjoyable through these means. Worst things worst, this is a failed experiment I learn a lot from. Either way. Right now, I plan on simply adding the sword following the mouse part. I watched this amazing tutorial from Code Monkeys that shows exactly what I need to get done. In short, by calculating the mouse's position and finding the degrees to rotate the swords around a point towards that position, you can have the sword rotate around your player while following the mouse. I then combine that system with the 2D circle overlap from the other system I scrapped, and I now had a very bare bones but functional combat system. I'm pretty proud of what I achieved, even though I don't understand exactly everything I did, I imagine with time and practice, it'll all come together. There are a lot of things I'm planning on adding to this rework, but I don't want to encounter scope creep. Scope creep is the phenomenon of someone constantly adding things to their to-do list while making a game, and I honestly want to prevent that. What you are seeing now is my finalized list of everything I plan to add, maybe less, but nothing more. I guess you guys could consider this my pledge of not burning myself out. I'm leaving this rog log here, and I think that what I added is completely satisfactory for the moment. I want to apologize to everyone for this very late upload. I just started a new school semester, and I've been distracted with gaming. But, on a positive note, I want to thank everyone for the tremendous support I've gotten over my last video. In no way could I have expected to get over 10 subscribers from just one video, and just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Hopefully your continued support can push me to upload videos sooner. I have a lot of plans for this channel and I can't wait to get started. I might as well make the most with this time and plug my TikTok and Twitter. Go check them out. I plan to post TikToks occasionally and Twitter, I don't know yet, but yeah. Go check them out in the description below. And let me know if you guys would be interested in me streaming. I have no idea and I'm not really familiar with it, but I figure if I'm going to be playing games, maybe I might as well have at least be able to entertain you guys, but just an idea. Consider subscribing and liking the video if you enjoyed it. It really helps the channel and I just want to, again, thank you everyone for doing that on the last video. It meant a lot to me. Thank you. It's been Froggish. See you guys later. Hopefully not in three weeks later. Hopefully like one week. Okay, bye.